thank you for joining us uh, for this webinar. I can see some familiar names there in the, uh, in the audience. Uh, nice to see you all, or at least virtually. Um, so we're um, very lucky today to have uh, Dr. Fei Teng uh, to speak to us about privacy protection for energy consumption data. This is a piece of research that was funded by the Supergen Energy Network's Hub Flex Fund. So it's great to be able to hear about how Faye has been getting on with the work. Um, just to let you know that this session is being recorded, if you haven't uh, picked that up when you joined, uh, but just to let you know. So just a few words about Fei Teng. Uh, Fei Teng is a lecturer in the Department of Electrical and Electronic Engineering at Imperial College London. He's currently the Education Director of the Energy Futures Lab and the Deputy Director of the Imperial Tsinghua Joint Research Centre for Intelligent Power and Energy Systems. And he's also a visiting researcher at Mean Paris Tech in France. And his research focuses on the efficiency, security and privacy of future cyber physical energy systems, particularly those with high levels of power electronic uh, interface generation in them. And Faye is going to talk to us now um, about his, his research on this privacy protection. And then what I'll do is I'll try and facilitate a Q&A session at the end as well uh, for any comments or questions that anybody might have. So over to you, Faye. Thank you very much. Okay, thanks very much, Phil, for the introduction. Uh, good afternoon, uh, colleagues. Uh, today is my great pleasure to um, introduce a bit of work that funded by Supergen Networks. Um, before I go to the uh, the details, I will uh, just um, one second, uh, briefly introduce about the research that we have been working on at Imperial. So we, as uh, introduced by Phil, um, we can kind of focus on the energy efficiency, security, and privacy perspective of the uh, future cyber physical energy systems. Uh, there are two, uh, many two streams. Uh, one is we look at the system operation of uh, high with high penetration of renewable energy, in particular converter interface generations. Uh, this, is, this is a piece of work that I have been working since my uh, PhD. And then uh, another part is uh, uh, about the more focus on the physical, uh, the, the cyber layer of, of some our energy systems, uh, looking a bit on uh, cybersecurity and also privacy. So it's a it's, uh, it's, it's great opportunity uh, to receive funding from uh, Supergen Networks to explore this relatively new area uh, since I was appointed as lecturer at Imperial. Um, so again, I'm um, like thank all the kind of um, uh, funding uh, founders in the past to enable us uh, to uh, as a team to work in uh, this uh, interesting and relevant area. Um, then that I will just get back to um, the main topic uh, we were going to discuss. That is about how to um, provide um, privacy protection. Uh, for some energy consumption data. Um, the focus will uh, look at a bit different protection technologies and also how consumer might play a critical role in that. So um, this is the first part, kind of this is the first of uh, this line of work. We are so glad to have this uh, super, the fund from Supergen to enable us to um, carry out this. Uh, I will also uh, introduce a bit how we have developed since the, uh, we research, um, received the funding from uh, Supergen uh, Networks. It's really a great opportunity, particular for early career researchers uh, to start investigate some new um, topics. So maybe just uh, a bit on the uh, background side, uh, digitalization, I, I, I believe everyone are familiar. It's a really trending word these days. So digitalization will fundamentally change the way that we are going to generate, trade, and, and consume energy. So um, by capturing, uh, storing, and making use of some of the data, um, digitalization will enable us to run our energy network more efficiently, and more importantly, to achieve the decarbonization uh, at the uh, lowest cost. 
Um, for in terms of this, uh, the source of data, uh, if you're looking at more on operational perspective, um, large scale implementation of PMUs will enable us to collect a large amount of operational data. And if we look at from ISAT perspective, um, the sensor deployment um, would collect the data and enable a more um, kind of um, better um, maintenance and prediction for um, asset life and outages. Um, last, uh, the next is about the smart meter data that has been collected to analyze the behaviors and for where I will get back that to uh, later. And also there are a large amount of um, electricity market data uh, due to the transparency requirement that has been available to analyze the market, to make the bidding strategy uh, and so on. Um, yes, this is uh, a basically we have collected, um, um, put together uh, a table that contains some of the um, data that has been made available uh, for most of the participants, um, which has played, I believe, a quite critical role, uh, not only in research, but also for uh, the companies to um, improve their efficiency. Those data includes, as mentioned, uh, smart meter data, uh, market data from various sources, and also system and network data. As this project is focused on kind of consumer energy consumption, um, I will probably discuss a little bit more uh, regarding how we see the benefits of smart metering. Smart, uh, smart meter has been um, fast rolled out uh, for domestic households, uh, which can um, collect half hourly data of the energy consumption, uh, which creates actually several opportunities to uh, change and improve our grid management. Uh, those are including um, the um, better forecasting of electricity loads um, by accessing the smart meter data or see more on net load uh, forecasting as gradually we have PV, behind meter PVs um, that will make the forecasting harder, but by accessing smart meter data that will be resolved this. And also there are more and more distributed energy sources, uh, generation storage has been installed uh, with smart metering. Um, through them, they, they will provide the visibilities for grid management and topology edification and so on. Uh, another important element is um, smart meter data enable the uh, time of use tariff and also demand side management incentive uh, schemes. Um, it can also be used to identify uh, some flexibilities um, through extraction of the appliances and also uh, disaggregate some of the loads into appliance level to see how and where the per some flexibilities that we required uh, to run our future operation system uh, can be sourced. Last but not least, the development of peer-to-peer -peer networks and uh, energy collectives are rely on the availability of smart metering. So as we can see that the, the uh, implementation of smart metering or advanced metering infrastructures have bring significant benefit. However, uh, one thing we have to um, realize is accessing to personal smart, smart meter data has raised some privacy concerns. To illustrate this further, um, I will uh, mention one of the um, surveys that was carried out in 2017. Um, as we can see that um, all the um, participants are required to, to select one of the uh, four options. So most of the first three options are basically um, re reflecting um, they are comfortable of sharing the smart meter data uh, under different conditions. Well, the last, last element is the last option is they are really uh, against uh, share of any of their data. So what the survey found is actually there actually did exist uh, privacy concerns among the smart meter data, but it varies. Um, some of the key concerns re regarding the premise, uh, privacy um, data, including uh, data misuse 
or sale of this data to third party. Um, and also including some um, linkage of personal information uh, with the smart meter uh, data. Um, of course, include also the uh, identif identification of occupants, daily routine, and so on. However, we have to um, point out is that from this survey, um, there's only a very small group of participants that really against the um, uh, about sharing the smart meter data which seems to be like the uh, privacy of smart mint data is not the key concern for the customers. This actually um, kind of been supported by another survey, a more recent survey that compared with um, banking transactions, medical uh, records, um, the electricity, electricity usage, the blue one, is the least, one of the least concerned element. However, we, what we would like to um, point out is that privacy is actually very highly depends on the behavior factors and context and more important the level of knowledge. So one assumption that we have is the users has not been fully informed on what is uh, around the, um, what can be really inferred from the privacy, uh, from the smart meter data it not will communicate it with the uh, consumer. This is actually supported by another survey in 2019. If you look at um, in the, the first one, so this, this survey is basically to test once more information about the privacy is released to the participants, whether they change their decision regarding um, if or how often to share the data. Uh, if you look at this grid operator, this is basic smart meter data, we can see that once the users are will better informed regarding what kind of information can be inferred from smart meter data, almost 90% of those users has changed their selection regarding how to uh, share their data. In particular, 10% of the users has decided to not share of data. So this is just raised the concern uh, about existing surveys that has not really considered uh, some key element. The most important one we believe is what kind of information that really around smart meter data. Um, because of this funding for this project, we have managed to uh, apply for a follow-up project, uh, smart media data and the privacy concerns. We are now developing a survey to look at in the UK, once the users are more informed, what kind of personal information can be linked with smart media data, whether in the UK context, they will change their preference about data sharing. So um, the key questions, yeah, that we would like to answer in this uh, SuperGen project and also uh, following our project um, are followings. So firstly, we would like to really understand what private information can actually be leaked by sharing smart metadata data when we have different um, time, spatial time resolutions we have conducted a V and also developed some techniques to infer this private information. I will discuss that. And then we wanted to look at the existing uh, approaches that has been discussed, which can potentially protect privacy of the smart meter data. But the main focus we are interested in is what are the impact of this pr um, privacy protection on the utility of the data. We collect the data because we want to utilize it uh, to reduce um, the system, to make more efficient operation. Um, so it's important to understand once the privacy concerns has been incorporated, whether it is still beneficial or how much kind of compromise that will be um, in terms of um, the data. Then we would also try to look at how to evaluate the data what is the value of data under different um, privacy protections. 
and this would allow us to incentivize um, data sharing where we can balance really the privacy concerns and the utility. This will lead a bigger problem about the market in incentives mechanisms and that will be uh, covered a bit in the end. One thing I have mentioned is privacy is really quite different, um, let's say, context for different um, users. So there are significant heterogeneous preference existing there. So uh, how we can really recognize and out and um, leverage the different privacy uh, preferences to do this really consumer centric uh, privacy protection. We provide the right privacy at the right cost to the people, uh, to the customers. Um, they are um, interested. So yeah, I will go through some of this um, element, but have to say that um, most of them probably need a bit more, um, a lot more, not a bit more, a lot more research in the future. But I hope this project will open up uh, this topic um, and to recognize the importance of it for future uh, investigation. To start with, we um, did a really kind of comprehensive survey uh, about what kind of information that can be inferred from the SMAMIR data uh, based on different techniques. Um, probably some of you have heard um, this um, non-intrusive load monitoring techniques, or some, sometimes we call that non-intrusive load disaggregation, which is basically we can dis disaggregate the SMAMIR data uh, at different time resolutions to identify, as shown here, to identify where and when each of the appliances has been used. So there are a lot of literature literatures in the past um, 10 years um, to develop techniques to uh, um, the appliance identification and usage, and also to infer the daily routines. Uh, it has been demonstrated from high resolution of smart data, it's possible to know when people wake up, leave the house, when they particularly um, um, perform specific activities such as cooking and watching TV. And also um, there are other um, techniques uh, on regression or classification problem. It's mainly to look at really number of occupants, how many people, how many children or pets that existing at home, uh, what type of house, how many bedrooms, and also um, some of our private information regarding the incomes and in, uh, employment status. And then we also look at, this is from the um, domestic sectors. We also look at the, these techniques when it applied to uh, industry or factory um, system. It is also possible, um, has been demonstrated in, um, in the paper, it is possible to infer actually what is the sequence of the different appliances um, in the um, in the factory, which might um, kind of link to leakage of um, commercial sensitive information from factory, or their um, product production rate of the factory. That's also um, in some cases are um, kind of confidential or private uh, for the factory. However, um, most of this existing work has rely on large amount of historical data. Um, people may argue that um, for the um, some um, privacy intruders, these assumptions may not um, kind of valid, which may be the case. Um, therefore, we are um, trying to look at whether it is possible uh, to develop some algorithms to infer particular appliances uh, in the house without relying on large amount of historical data. Uh, what we are looking at is actually electrical vehicle charging profile from the smart meter data. The reason of looking at that is because electrical vehicle charging profiles are very distinct, right? They normally require a quite high power and, constant, and uh, last for relatively long period. This is a figure you can see that for different types of EVs, how 
uh, in general, the charging profile can be looks like, which means this kind of profile can be relatively e easier to be identified from the smart meter data. Well, on the other hand, the charging profile of electrical vehicles linked a lot of um, personal information regarding when, for example, when do you uh, leave house, right? When we get back and how long the distance that we travel for each day, which may be inferred as where you are working on uh, and so on and so forth. So in fact, we did um, um, very, um, rely on a very small amount of uh, data to accurately, we develop an algorithm um, by combining the machine learning and also statistic um, techniques um, to analyze electrical vehicle data from uh, without um, training requirement. So as we can see here for a particular smart meter data from we use their set, uh, for the smart meter data, we can really accurately, this is a true EV charging profile and we can um, accurately disaggregate it from the whole smart meter data. Um, of course, you may argue that the sum of data may not have, may have some noises, may not as um, when we receive it accurate as um, as ideal case. And then we also test it whether some of noises will remove or reduce the identification of smart of EV charging. This case, you can see that this is the original case where um, we have the uh, yeah, I mentioned that before. And then we are this, um, the smart meter data, and then we apply again the same techniques. And uh, fortunately or unfortunately, we say that depends on where you see this, uh, this work, um, you still be able to really accurately to disaggregate the smart meter data. And then uh, we have demonstrated for the proposed uh, algorithms is almost kind of immune for different types of noise added into smart meter charging profile. So details that um, can be um, found in this uh, paper we recently published under this uh, project. So we have kind of um, satisfied us that there are indeed um, quite a lot of private information can be inferred from the uh, smart meter data. The next part we are looking at is how to maintain the privacy. To start with, we would like to kind of define um, or understand what is the definition of privacy. So privacy, can, one of the common definition is privacy is about hiding controls over the personal data that you share how it is used and who can have access of it. Um, there are already um, quite significant work in this area to looking at alternative uh, privacy preserving mechanism. Um, we kind of categorize that in mainly three different um, options. The first one is encryption. So um, this is basically to encrypt the data that would only allow trusted party to access it. However, this is uh, valid uh, to prevent unauthorized access, but it's not going to um, disallow the trusted party to use the data um, unauthorized, right? So again, once the data is encrypted, is this encrypted, um, there's no control about how the parties that use this data. The second is about use uh, demand shipping, which is effectively change the demand consumptions to hide some of this information. Um, however, uh, normally in this case, we have to change our behavior or through using storage devices is either not acceptable for the user or it's too expensive to have a storage that's just for to protect the privacy. Um, the third one is what we are mainly looking at. It's called data manipulation. It's basically to add, to manipulate smart, smart 
data before sharing can be preserved. Uh, the first two are mostly um, which are the aggregation and sampling. The first one is the aggregation and sampling. So basically we can aggregate the load profile across multiple users or reduce the resolution of the um, sampling. Uh, for the um, lower resolution data, that will definitely compromise the usability of the data. But for the aggregation, uh, there are already work that is demonstrated. Uh, it is still be possible to identify particular appliances, even the load profiles are aggregated. And the pseudonymization is to removing or replace the identifying information, um, for example, the names or postcode so that um, it is hard to identify which people or which household are associated with particular profile. However, again, there are um, research has demonstrated uh, through linkage attack, pseudonymization uh, can be uh, compromised uh, by linking with alternative or other source of data. So, uh, it is called differential privacy. Um, this is uh, a recent, I mean, in the last 10 years, they have great development of um, technology development for differential privacy in data sector, particular for machine learning applications, which is basically to add this into the data, which actually can mathematically ensure particular individuals cannot be identified from the data set. Um, of course, they are will, um, one of the key problem, as you can imagine, is once we add noise into the data set, that's going to compromise the um, usabilities and, and privacy. Um, um, I'm not sorry, uh, the key um, usabilities of the data, the value of the data. That's I will going to go back a bit later. So, um, introduce a little bit um, on the concept of differential privacy. So, um, the DP um, introduced a fundamental framework that would define the likelihood of uh, being identified, a particular user being identified within specific data set for a given risk um, um, allowance. Um, if we look at in a mathematical way, it's basically to say that um, the probability of one particular output um, over one given data set and its neighboring data set um, uh, satisfy these mathematical correlations. Uh, the definition of the neighboring data set is two data sets that only different by one individual. So it, it is a bit complex to um, understand that directly from this magical definition, but it might be easier if we look at when we have different privacy budget, how so we have relatively larger um, privacy budget. As we can see that the um, original data set, which represents the blue, and the, the um, data sets that removed one particular user that is red. We can see that these are fundamentally different. So it's, it's basically quite easy to know that someone has been inside the data or not. While well, when we add a bit more and more noises, um, when we have lower budgets of privacy um, risks, um, it is actually for these two different um, probabilities, we can see that the distribution of the outcomes uh, include or exclude this particular user are the same, right? So in this way, it means that we, it's not possible to know that if one particular user is inside the group of, uh, or not. Um, so in this way, if you if we look at from the data sharing um, shared perspective, it, it's, it's basic to say we want to limit the impact of one individual uh, consumers on the output of particular function so that 
um, it is not be possible to identify this user by reverse or by post-processing um, the information. To achieve this, um, it is possible um, to, it's, 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 it has been mathematically proved, we can introduce the Laplace noises uh, with the um, two parameter, one is the delta F, is uh, to describe the range of the output, and also if Shilo, where is the um, privacy um, that, um, budget. Uh, if when we have, as we can see here, when we have lower privacy budget, we will, we will have to add more noises, and then which would lead to higher protection against uh, being identified inside the database or not. Um, right. Um, another concept, basically the traditional DP program is developed for a given, for fixed data set. But for the smart meter data, it is actually continuously releasing. So, um, which means um, if we have uh, enough, long enough time, it is, will be mathematically proved that it's always possible to identify information. And we also, we found actually a very recent paper last year uh, looking at um, a new concept called discounted um, differential privacy, which assume that the data from farther past less sensitive than the, the newer data. So this uh, method would allow us to uh, still to again uh, generate a producer bound formulation for a growing data set, which is exactly uh, useful for smart meter data. So in this way, uh, if we have alpha, that's in the in the noises, we have a new element here to reflect how do you uh, value the past data. Um, in this way, how we to discount uh, the past data. Um, those are not new. Um, this has been investigated in different data set and also some of have to um, been applied for smart meter data. But what we really wanted to hear is how really to balance the utility uh, and the privacy of the smart meter data by using the techniques. To, uh, to enable this, we, def we have to understand how by adding differential privacy would reduce the utility or the value of smart meter data so that certain balance between utility and privacy can be achieved. Um, as we have mentioned, uh, the first, the very first application of smart meter data is to improve the forecasting accuracy of electricity load. Therefore, we select this application as example to investigate how to in, um, value smart meter data under different privacy protection schemes or different level of DP in particular in this one. Um, for the um, forecasting of the electricity load, the uh, retailers would have to have that information in order to access or uh, in the day ahead and also balancing mechanism. So in here, we would like to investigate is um, by accessing half an hour smart meter data, um, how the procurement cost for the retailer can be reduced. And if those data has added noises, how that really re, um, reduce the benefit of accessing half hour data. So to enable that we developed um, a framework um, available, uh, whether it is directly go to the um, EC, the data collector agent, uh, and by adding the different privacy centrally, or if we don't have a DCC, the smart meter data can also achieve the same level of privacy by distributed in a decentralized way through adding the noises. And then we have the smart meter data, um, either um, adding noises or not, right? 
then we can use those data to use to as input for the forecasting um, tools uh, uh, a network is used. And the output of the forecasting is used by a low serving entity to beat into their data head and the inter and the balancing market. And then we can evaluate the difference between different level of um, privacy, uh, different level of privacy protection, and how the um, utility or retailer uh, may suffer or gain by accessing smart meter data. For the load serving entity, they actually have a two level procurement problem. They need to decide uh, in day ahead uh, about clearing what the offers they would like to put in a day ahead. And also when they get into real time, uh, when certain realization happens, they need to decide um, where to put into the balancing mechanism so that the, the total uh, demand of its customer are served. Uh, one thing we I want to mention here is most of retailers have some uh, risk controls. They have um, normally uses a FISAVAR as a um, risk um, preference um, so that the whole problem uh, for that stage risk constraint stochastic program problem. Uh, we use some it is as a mixed integer programming, which can be easily uh, resolved in existing uh, softwares. Um, I want to, to yeah, quickly present some of the case studies we have been looking at. We, uh, we look at four different cases with different settlement and forecasting mechanism. Uh, to start with is the current cases where the settlement of the retailer only rely on the daily load profile coefficient. Um, and then the other three um, are for the retailers, they will um, settle their um, bill based on the half an hour data. But the first one, um, assuming they actually, they have all the uh, half an hour data access, the, the, the next one here is DL system. We're assuming um, they do not have access to any actual half hour data, but they only have access to the whole system data. The last case is um, similar as the second one, but those half an hour data has been added by different level of noises to keep different level of differential privacy. Um, we used this um, CER behavior trial uh, in Ireland in 2012. Um, we have um, added, uh, in addition to the data, we added the synthetic solar and electrical vehicle data to include, to improve the load diversity, um, reflect the, kind of better reflect the situation uh, in the future. Uh, we look at, um, different uh, assessment metrics um, to understand how the load of profile would impact the uh, forecasting. Um, to start with is this um, KRD, um, KR divergency, which is used to describe how a particular customer base would different from the whole system. Because in the study we have found out uh, based on the past um, data, if we have enough a, a kind of diversified groups, the system level data is already quite representative for the group, which means there is no value to access individual customer data. While if in the future, um, we have smaller group set and more kind of similar behaviors that are different from the whole system and the consumption, we find out that it's more benefit to uh, access smart meter data or to access the smart meter data of its own user. So this KLD is to is used to re represent how different of one particular customer base against the whole system data. Another parameter is the forecasting accuracy, is the weighted absolute percentage error that is used to describe how the forecasting error changes um, when different level of noises that I did it. So in here, um, I 
um, introduce the first funding that we have in looking at. We have three, um, let's look at the mainly the orange and the uh, blue. Um, the orange and blue are represent the fore forecasting accuracy with and without uh, access smart meter data of one particular customer um, base. As we can see here, when we have more diverse KR divergence increases, which means the particular customer behaves quite differently from the system level, we can see that the blue one, when we only have access to system level average, um, the forecasting error increase dramatically, while uh, if we really have access to these individual smart meter data, the differences, the forecasting error um, reduces compared with the blue one. But this is only the case that if we have significant divergence about customer base um, for this retailer against the whole system. Um, to put that uh, a bit forward, once we utilize the forecasted um, values, we would like really to see whether there are benefits or there are rooms to adding privacy. Because if, even if, because in the case that the whole data set without noises, if the benefits is really small, which means there is no rooms really to add privacy, because that will really make very terrible performance uh, in that context. So we look at uh, four groups from A, B, C, D, which represent different KRD level. Um, the higher KRD means the customer base is more diversified from the whole system, while lower one means they are uh, alike, as you can see uh, here. The, the blue one is the system level, the orange one is particular customer site. Yeah. What we found here is if the, um, the, the, uh, the red one in this case are very similar to the system average, which means the KRD is low, there's almost no rooms to adding noises because slightly adding noises as shown here, it will perform worse than directly accessing the system of the data. Well, if we look at another extremes, um, this orange one, um, again, is we only have access to the whole system data in terms of forecasting error. We can see that um, in most of the cases, even with adding noises into the um, smart meter data, we also have significant benefits of improved forecasting here. Um, on the, 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 the one on the left means have higher privacy protection by adding more noises. Um, so that um, the conclusion here is really depends on in the future, how the customer sites, custom profiles of particular retailers would look like, how they are going to be diversified from the system level that will to see how much really the room existing for uh, adding privacy. Yeah, in this one is we move that a bit forward and not only look at how that impact the forecasting error and also look at how that impacts the cost of retailer to accept, to accept the privacy protection. Uh, we look at, again, similar assumptions. Um, the one on the, um, in, in this case is assuming the EHS is assuming the retailer have access to the exact least amount of data of individual household. On the far right of the assumption is assuming the retailer only have access to system level data. As we can see here, when we add um, increased level of noises into it, um, there is a decline or increased cost for the uh, retailer. It's also reflected if consumers are demanding higher level of noises or higher level of protection of privacy, um, it's going to cost more for retailers. On the other hand, it's same to say cost more for the um, customer. 
one important element um, in this particular project is to look at if we have different um, privacy preferences for different customer. There are actually also existing a HDP, heterogeneous differential privacy techniques, where we can not only looking at one individual privacy for the whole data set or the whole customer, we can specify different level of privacies. For cons consumers, they have higher, uh, have higher privacy preference. Uh, we, can add, um, we can buy reducing um, their appearance in the system um, average data, um, and it can help to maintain their privacy. Well, for the ones that have lower privacy, um, we can also by reducing the overall ID noises um, to maintain their, their uh, privacy preference. So in general, it is possible to provide customized level of privacy um, for the whole uh, customers. Um, it is, will allow to add in general, in total less noises to reduce less of the data set. So here is a example we have demonstrating when we have different proportion of users has higher um, privacy preference. As we can see that um, by splitting um, the, by explicitly considering the different preferences, uh, depends on what is the proportion that has higher preference. We can actually significantly reduce the costs for retailers and then this will be reflected to the consumer um, privacy uh, benefit. So for the future development, um, we, will, we will look at a bit on the uh, integrated energy and the data market. We have clearly see that by sharing the data, it will reduce the energy costs. Um, while well, we are going to look at how we can pricing properly um, the data at the same time as the energy so that the consumers can be incentivized to, to select the correct privacy preference for themselves and uh, we can achieve, we can maintain the privacy for everyone based on their preference and also achieve the least cost. So um, another part we would like to look at is by applying privacy protection te techniques to against some cyber attacks, um, as some of the cyber attacks require to investigate the system topology. And um, if we release the environment data without protection, it has been proved in our paper, it can be easily utilize those data to work out the, from the attacker perspective, the system topology and to act to um, provide or to conduct cyber attacks. So then how this privacy protection um, mechanism can be used for the release of um, system environment data. So let's just very quickly, sorry, it's been running up over time. I just quickly could conclude um, the, the presentation. Uh, first, I uh, really appreciate the, the funding from SuperG Networks that allowed me to explore this new research area. And the key um, outcomes of the, um, this project, we have managed to publish two papers, and we also organized a special issue in Smart Grid on privacy and security uh, in a Smart Grid in the IEEE Smart Grid Journal. I also presented this work in last year's IEEE um, PES Journal as a panel session. So this really um, helped me to develop my research profile and benefit from the sport. We also have managed to get some follow-up funds, um, including one studentship and one uh, survey support that I have mentioned. So I think that will be all for me. Um, Thanks, Dave. Well, yeah. Thank you for a really interesting talk, Faye. And you can see from the chat that uh, people are really interested in what you've been talking about. And it's lovely to see what you've managed to achieve with, with a relatively small amount of funding from the Supergen Hub. It's, uh, it's lovely to see that. So uh, congratulations on what you've done with, with that funding. Um, there's, so there, there's a question that you, I, get, I think you touched upon right at the end there was how does privacy relate to cybersecurity? So uh, maybe we could move on from there. One of, one of the people 
in the audience here is Kraken Yu, who has made a number of questions and comments. Kraken, would you like to come in and put your questions or comments to Faye? Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you, uh, Philip. Um, we are not an academic company. We are a commercial company in Dublin here. We work for the last few years on the similar um, area on, on uh, um, we call them the transactive energy. Um, we actually have a meeting with our colleagues in Netherlands this morning. Um, they are uh, facing the similar issue of the data ownership uh, as Mr. Tang was suggesting. Uh, we are um, very anxious to learn uh, how UK is deal with that and more to do with the regulations aspect. Um, by the way, uh, we'd be happy to, to have a, a, some uh, further dialogue uh, with, with uh, the speakers and indeed uh, with the organization. Um, so all in all, as, as Philip uh, uh, kindly give me two minutes off the floor then is that um, the, the technical aspect, what you suggest, uh, is very insightful, and uh, thank you very much for that. Um, but before you apply the technology regarding for the DP and so forth, um, what is the regulation from the context of England and India in UK for the ownership of the data? Do they belong to uh, the owner of the property, be it be a consumer or business or do they belong to the energy supplier or the grid please right um i think that's really excellent question and i'm really glad to see that um, there are some work that is relevant for what i'm doing here um for in, regarding the uh, regulation i believe that is not really been uh, set in stone in the uk um, there are a few consultations that are going on from Ovgen regarding how to enable the settlement of the uh, smart meter uh, data. I think if I, I may have the, yeah, I may, have, if you look at this, basically I didn't mention that, but the current thinking is currently uh, the data will be collected in the UK by DCC and then that will be directly shared with, sorry. Yeah, I'm not sure if you can see this. Uh, it's going to direct share, if you look at the right side of the, the figure, that's going to directly shared with the, the uh, retailers. They have access to that data. Mm -hmm. but, but in the future, it has been agreed that um, this data may not be necessary to be shared with retailer. The DCC will collect the data and they will process the data and do aggregation and then release that to Electron. But I heard that the uh, the very latest um, um, regulation is for the residential customers. They have the um, they will be by default to provide uh, the half hour data, while they have this option uh, to opt out and only provide data in daily resolution. So there currently there's no any um, kind of clear um, conclusions regarding how we define the ownership of the data and how really we can protect the privacy of the users. So understand, understand um, there is no really any um, framework yet uh, in the UK um, to explicitly um, agree on that. that thanks, Faye. Um, Thank you I very just, much. Yeah. Thank you, Kraken. If I could just move things along, just because we haven't got much time. There's a comment that maybe you'd like to consider from Paul Jarman about um, an NHS system called Open Safely. I don't know if you're aware of that, but it's something you might want to look at and see if there's some parallels there. Paul has kindly uh, mentioned that and asked the question. And I can see Miriam has a, a hand up for a question as well. Miriam? Hi, yes. Thank you, Phil. And thank you, Faith, for the, the overview. Um, I wanted to ask a question about your assumptions behind the smart metering. So smart metering system in the UK has been designed by the Department of Energy and GCHQ, which is the sec security organization in the UK. 
and uh, the uh, smart metering system implements something called public key infrastructure where we have um, encryption used to uh, send the data and not just send the data, authenticate data. Mm -hmm. So any data coming out of your smart meter will not go to anyone unless it is a trusted party and it is encrypted. So my yeah. question to you is, have you made the assumption that we need to deploy those privacy preserving uh, methods to a system that does not use a PKI infrastructure, such as a different system than it is used in the UK, or are you assuming there has been a hack and something uh, tremendous happened and the whole PKI system of the smart metering was broken down and that's why we need those privacy preserving methods? Mm -hmm. Right, I, I think that's that's an excellent question again. Um, um, in the beginning, I mentioned that there are, of course, alternative techniques to provide um, privacy. But in our context, we are looking at le legitimate users, legitimate users. You are right that encryption will prevent the um, unauthorized users, but for some authorized users, even like retailers, right? They are authorized to access the data but they may, you, we, for the consumer, once the data is transmitted to this third, uh, to the retailers, you will lose control about how the data is utilized. Um, but it, by using differential privacy, it's basically before you're transmitting the data, uh, the data will have the noises in it. So even for an authorized user, they will not be able to utilize some of the information you do not want them to refer to. This is the basic idea we are having. It's going to be complementary for encryption, which mainly looking at prevent unauthorized users. And in this case, these are authorized users, but you do not want them to access all your information. Okay, I hope that answered your question, Miriam. Um, so we're just about to wrap up now, I guess. One, one thing I was going to say, Faye, is I'm assuming that the processing to do all of this happens in the smart meter itself mm -hmm. remotely. So I was wondering how computationally intensive are these algorithms for the encryption and adding the noise? And are the smart meters capable of, of, of that at the moment in their current spec? And also I wondered whether it might increase the energy consumption uh, of the meter, we had a talk recently about the energy consumption of software and ICT systems and how they can add up, especially if we've got millions of smart meters. Right. Um, I think in that perspective, there are, I, mean, I mentioned there are maybe two different ways of adding it. It's indeed a concern is whether smart meter data or at least current version, they have this capability. Um, but our understanding is most of the um, smart meter have enough processing power or made at least as the latest versions. But in the case that the distribute or decentralized addition is not possible, um, we can add noises or adding this uh, apply the algorithms in the DCC. They will collect the data and then they add the relevant noises before they release that to the retailer, for example. And in that sense, we can do a centralized addition as well. Um, but of course, the, uh, we, are, we are going to assume that the customers will trust DCC as a government body. Okay, thanks, Faye. Well, I think I'll, I'll stop it there and just say thank you very much indeed for a really interesting chat. It stimulated a lot of uh, conversation in the chat function. And um, please uh, feel free to contact us if you want to get in touch with Faye or you can probably find his details online if you want to follow up these conversations. Thank you, everybody.